Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again, and this is yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip over there. For this one, we are going to go back to the state of Iowa, which was where I went for my friend's wedding, and we're going to go to West Okoboji, which was just down the road actually from where the wedding took place. So we're having a taste of my first beer from West O Beer, and this one is the West O Smoked Red Ale, which comes in at 6 points. 5% ABV. So there was a choice of the, the different West O beers in the shop that I was in, but this is the one that kind of stood out to me, mainly because I love American Reds and Ambers, but also because the smoked beers were where my love of beer began when I was down in, uh, in Bamberg in Germany. So I thought, you know, this one should be a really, really good combination of the two. So hopefully it lives up to my expectations, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. Probably this is the most well-travelled bottle of West O beer that there has ever been, you know, it's probably the first one that's ever made it over here to uh, to Scandinavia. So yeah, another little interesting point about this video. But anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from West O Beer. Very first time I'm tasting one of their beers, of course. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you, that's constantly being added to, and as always please, do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway on to my brewery notes then, to tell you a little bit about West Old Beer then. So West O Beer, as I mentioned to you earlier, are based in West Okoboji in Iowa, which is kind of in the northwestern part of the state in the US Midwest. But the company was founded back in 2013 by Matt and Michaela Matthiasen, who obviously with that name have some Danish heritage. The SEN at the end gives you the, the hint there. But apparently they'd been home brewers for a number of years. And um, this had actually stemmed from a home brewing session that Michaela had arranged for Matt's 30th birthday. But his father had also brewed for a number of years when he was younger, and uh, he was really eager to get involved in their new hobby and he actually ended up growing some grains in his garden and also planted about 40 different hop vines as well. But after five years of home brewing, Matt and Michaela considered opening up a brew pub in Spencer in Iowa and they drew up a business plan for this back in 2008 and when they were doing this they also attended several brewing courses at the Siebel Institute over in Chicago. But following this they decided that they would rather open up a bottling canning, basically like packaging brewery as they were calling it. So they chose Okoboji for this because of the soft water that the area you know, that the area boasts. It's got a nice big lake there, of course. But when starting the brewery, they decided to hire professional brewers rather than having Matt doing all the brewing to ensure that there was quality from the beginning and ensure that it was consistent as well. Because that's one of the big problems when you start up your own craft brewery. You might be able to brew good beer, but the question is whether you're always going to get the same consistency. But their current head brewer is Connor Fahey, who started out as their, uh, their assistant brewer, actually, back in 2014, if I remember correctly. Um, but he was born in Colorado and grew up in Minnesota. But the brewery name itself comes from the brewery's location in West Okoboji, hence West O, and you can find the brewery just off US Highway 71. And they also have a tap room there as well, which opens up from Friday to Sunday. When I was down there, or when I was over there rather, Unfortunately, I didn't actually get the chance to visit the brewery. That's something I would have quite liked to have uh, to have done, and I, sh I should have done that, to be honest with you. But one of the things I always found really strange about some of these breweries that are in the very, very rural areas is that you pretty much have to drive... Um, from anywhere to get a hold of these. So you'll get people that will go to the breweries, have a good few beers, and then they'll drive home in their big, massive American car. So it's something I've always found a bit strange about... Uh, about you know the the craft beer scene in America, a lot of these breweries are in industrial areas. People will go to the breweries, drink beers, and then just drive home. I always found that very very strange actually. And this brewery, you know, if you've been to Okoboji, 
other than Okoboji, there's not a lot there. There really is not. And, uh, you know, in America, you have to drive everywhere. So an interesting point to make about this. But Okoboji itself was a really nice little town. The people were very, very friendly. And my friend had a really, really nice wedding when I was out there. So, yeah, cool to be able to review a more unusual beer from America for you. For me as a European, it's always cool to try things from different places in America that you're not necessarily going to find so easily. But, yeah, um, that's all you really need to know about West Old Beer for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram, and that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on there. And, of course, you can check out the list of the different beers that they've done on Untapped or, indeed, on their website as well. But, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So, from what I gather, this beer uses pearl hops from Germany, which is a slightly higher alpha acid hop that's it's kind of similar in character to the usual Hallertau and Titnangers. What I'm very curious about with this one, though, is whether they've maybe used an American smoked malt or whether it will be the uh, the Bamberg smoke malts from Weyermann, which of course I'm very very familiar with. But yeah, I have to say, nice kind of Nice artwork on this one, I do like it. It's very kind of simple and straightforward, but also kind of quite tasteful, so kudos to them for that. It's also another thing I liked about that, that it does have a recycling thing on the back of it. I noticed in America that they're, you know, they're not too big on recycling. That's one of the other things I didn't, uh, that kind of concerned me a little bit when I was over there. Because um, it's been about, before that, it had been about nine years since I was in America. There you can see the West O Brewing bottle cap on there. And I do like this, how they say as well, brewed right here in Okoboji. That seems to be one of their kind and <laughs> marketing slogans as well. This beer incidentally is a 12 fluid ounce bottle in metric measurements, normal people measurements as I call them, that is 355 millilitres. And it says on the side here, congratulations, you've decided a, uh, you've decided a little colour in beer is a good thing. Our smoked red gets its name and notes from barley roasted over an open flame. This full flavour deal has everything you could ever hope for in a craft beer. A roasted, malty, nutty backbone with hints of dark fruit and campfire smoke. You'll never look back after this beer experience. Trust us. So, um, yeah, should be, should be good this one. So without further ado, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm really curious to see how this one turns out actually so yeah you can see some nice smoke on the opening there and we'll get it out and into the glass what I'll do is well, there's not much of a head coming out of this one there's still a little bit in the bottom of the bottle there but I'll leave that and we'll do the uh, you know we'll do the the sort of aroma and things like that and then put the rest of it in. So as you can see with this beer, actually if I hold it up to the light, it is a really nice sort of mahogany, reddish ruby mahogany kind of colour this one. I really like the colour out of this beer. It is actually pretty clear if I hold it up to the light. You can see little tiny bits of sediment uh, and particles just floating around in this one, but it is actually pretty clear. If I put my fingers behind the glass, I don't know how well you're going to see that to be honest, but trust me, if you shine the light through this one, it is pretty clear. Um, but yeah, a nice mahogany colour. You could see there was about a quarter finger of a frothy, sort of fawny coloured head, very, very slightly beigey coloured head on this one, which looked quite nice. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, for an American red or even a Rauch beer, the colour of this one is pretty much um, bang on what you would expect. It's a very similar, in, it's very similar in colour to some of the Schlenker lab beers that I've reviewed for you a good few years ago on the channel, or some of the other Rauch beers that I've brought home from Germany when I've been there. But um, yeah, you know, pretty much what you would expect in terms of appearance. So let's get on to the aroma and see how we get on there. So yeah. Oh, that smells pretty good. Actually, the aroma. Of this is really nice. So it's a really kind of sweet smokiness that's coming out of this one for me. I really like how that's going together. There's a lot of brown sugar in this one for me. So you can smell the nice smoky notes underneath that. And the thing I've always talked about when it comes to smoked beers as to whether it's, you know, whether it's a, a peaty smoke, as we would have back in Scotland, or whether it's a more meaty smoke that you would find in Germany. To me, this one's definitely a slightly sweeter smoke. This one's a little bit different. It almost reminds you of some of these um, American, like, barbecue-style things. It really has a little bit of that almost kind of smoked hickory wood kind of thing that you would uh, you would come across. It's almost like a kind of honey smoke that comes out of this beer a little bit. Um, but, yeah, definitely some nice nutty notes to this one. Um... The malt in this, I mean, I don't think that's German malt in there, I think that's American malt because it doesn't really smell like the Weyermann Rauch malts that you would get from Bamberg. 
I'd be surprised if I was wrong on that, but if I am, do correct me in the comment section below. Um, so yeah, a lovely, sweet, just smoky underlining to this one. There's a lot of woody quality to this as well, and to me it comes across as being a little bit oaky, which is kind of nice, or hickory as I was saying earlier. Um, nice brown sugary notes, quite a sweet caramel note in this one. It's not dark enough to be like treacle or molasses or, uh, or anything like this. And it does have a little bit of a toasty element to it, but mainly the brown sugars in this beer are quite sweet. Definitely some nice nutty qualities in there as well, 100% about that. Um, the wood, as I say, is quite smooth. Um, on the hoppy side of things, for me, the hops come across as being fairly smooth. It's got a nice little touch of a smooth earthiness in there. It has a nice little bit of a kind of floral aromaticity. And um, but the the floral side of the beer is fairly kind of reserved, if you like. It is kind of taking a bit of a back seat. There is a little bit of grassiness in there as well. When it comes to a German noble hop, I'm not sure if technically you can um, refer to Pearl as a noble hop because it is a little bit higher in alpha acid. I think it's like six point three or six point five alpha acid, whereas the normal Tetnangers are five point something. Um, but yeah, um, Pearl in this one, it really does have that distinctive German grassy and earthy note. The earthiness is very distinctly German if you compare it to Hallertown Tetnanger. As I say, the other hops you have that are similar to that, of course, are Lubelski from Poland, uh, Satz or Zatitz as the, uh, the, the Czechs call it from the Czech Republic, and uh, the Styrian Goldings from Slovenia. It really has that typical Central European hop quality in the green side of things. On the fruity side of the beer, this is where it gets really interesting. You've got some lovely red fruity qualities in there. It's got a big juicy um, sort of raisiny note to it. It does. It's a little bit like Sultanas to be honest, but it's, it's almost plummy. There is a little teeny touch of sharpness in there, but it has this really lovely juicy quality to it. Um, there's also some lighter figgy notes in there, maybe some black currants or blackberries too, um, but mainly it's a nice red fruity quality that comes out of that one. The aroma in this beer, I have to say, is Top notch, you know, big thumbs up to West O Beer for the aroma of this beer. That's that's it's absolutely quality this one I have to say. Using a wee bit of my Scottish lingo there. But um yeah, just take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it. Let's get the last of the beer into the glass before we taste it. So yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and just see how we get on. This one is the West O Smoked Red Ale from West O Beer in West O Koboji in Iowa, in the Midwest, in America. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, school, cheers. A smoked radio coming in at 6.5%. Skull. Ooh. Yeah. That is pretty nice. Um, let me just say straight away about this beer. This is by no means as kind of strong as and punchy as you're going to get from some of the the Schlenker beers in Germany. Um, this one is more of a. It's definitely a little bit one of one of these beers that's a little bit more of a kind of subtle hybrid type thing, but it really is quite nice. This beer must be beautiful on tap when it just has a slightly thicker mouthfeel. Whenever you put these beers in cans and bottles, of course, you are going to lose a little bit of thickness in the mouthfeel from the bottle conditioning. But um, yeah, this comes across really nicely. Yeah, um, this beer definitely gets a thumbs up from me. Um, you know, obviously, this is the interesting thing about this beer, is that you get... It's a German style combined with an American style, the American Reds, although, in fairness, you do have English radios as well, but I've never had an, a radio from the US that actually tastes like an English Red. The American ones are always a bit sweeter in their malt base and more juicy and fruity. It's, it's pretty much whenever the Americans get a hold of a, an old world beer style, if you like, and take it across to, to the new world, um, they always put a bit more hops and a bit more sugar and all of this kind of thing. And it's, it, they always just amp it up a little bit. But this one, to me, leans more towards the, the German side of things, actually. This is a nice sort of session. It's obviously got the American alcohol content in it. It's 6.5%. You know, you're talking Bock beers and things like that in Germany that have that level of alcohol. Most regular beers are around 5%. But this is good. Wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. I wish I'd bought more bottles of this back with me, or even just a bigger one. But yeah, um, so let's try and break this flavour down a little bit then. Straight away, you are going to feel a little bit of that nice, smooth, 
bread equal, you just blank at the middle of your tongue. I'm not convinced the statement I made earlier about thinking this is American malt is true. There is a bit of that German smoothness in there. Um, so there could be some German malts in here. Um, but yeah, you've got that nice um, smooth bready quality in there. It's kind of a brown bready note to be honest with you. Which is nice. Um, and if you just go if you go along the sides of your palate then just move in a little bit, that's where the woody notes start to come out of this beer. In the very centre of your palate you're going to pick up some nice brown sugary notes to the beer. And it's quite a sweet caramelly note to be honest with you but as you go further forward from that if you move further forward on the palate it's going to give you these little li nice kind of nutty elements that you would that it was describing on the side of the bottle there that's where the nutty side of this beer is coming out but yeah the mo I'm finding that the more I drink of this the more kind of smoky it's becoming. It's almost like the, the woody qualities that this beer has, that's where the smoky side of this beer is coming out. And um, it's kind of interesting because, um, as I said earlier, when you've got a peaty smoke, it's a little bit more earthy and grassy. Whereas if you've got um, a, a meaty smoke, if you've got a more German smoky character, it does come across as being a little bit more meaty. This one really is a little bit more woody. It's a little bit more woody and meaty. It's kind of a combination. So I wouldn't be surprised if the, the smoked malt that they have in here is done in America because it's not like anything that I've come across before. There must be a good few uh, malteries out there in the Midwest. Um, so that that's probably why it tastes a little bit different to what I'm used to in terms of the smoked malt. So that's an interesting thing. I would really be curious to know where their, uh, their smoked malt's coming from. That would be interesting about this because, um, you know, that would, that would be an interesting thing. An American smoked beer, that would be an interesting different style to try. And they're not exactly short of grain in the Midwest, I'll tell you that for nothing. But um, yeah, the, the malt base in this beer is really nicely done actually. It's, it's, it's definitely about all, how the, it's about how all these different flavours blend together. And I think they've balanced this beer really nicely. I mean, it does have a little bit of the slightly more boozy quality that you'd expect of an American craft beer. But it does retain some of that kind of classic, well-blended German smoothness. So I like this one. I like the idea that they've had behind this beer. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you've got that nice smooth earthiness that you would expect of a German hop there. They're getting a little bit of IBU from that but not all that much. The earthiness spreads forward a little bit. As you come further forward along the sides of the palate you've got a nice kind of floral aromaticity there. And then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's just that little bit lighter and grassy. Um, in terms of the flavour, again, I would say that this beer leans a little bit towards the, the grassy side of things in terms of the green side of hops. Behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those ju juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. Mm. Juicy, fruity, I should say. My brain's not working tonight. But yeah, in terms of the fruity side of this beer then... Um, for me, there's a little bit of a raisiny note to this one. If you go to the back of that um, sort of oily bubble there, definitely a little bit of a raisiny, plummy sharpness there. But as you move further forward, you really start to get these juicier, figgy notes out of the beer. And then as you move further into the aftertaste, it starts to become a little bit more sort of blackberry-ish, black currant -y type uh, type kind of thing. And the figs kind of sit there as well. So you've got this lovely, slightly berryish, juicy berryish quality in this beer the further you go into the aftertaste. The woody notes are also, the woody and the smoky notes are also pushing their way out a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste as well. And to be honest, the woody side of the beer almost comes across as being a little bit charred the further you go into the aftertaste too, which is a kind of interesting um, subtlety that the beer has, I guess you could say. But overall, in terms of the flavour, I really like this one. I think on keg or cask it would be even better, to be honest. Um, so yeah, thumbs up to uh, to West Old Beer for this one. I think they've done a nice job of this. I'm just disappointed that I only brought the one bottle back, but I wanted to bring as many things back as I could, of course. Um, so in terms of the, the mouthfeel of this beer then, let's have a look at that. Yeah, mid-bodied beer. Carbonation is um, carbonation is pretty smooth in this one, I would say. And um, the mouthfeel overall, it's got a good balance between wet and oily. And um, more wet than oily, though, I would say. There's just a little bit of oil in the the kind of 
in the back end of the beer. It's, it comes across as quite wet when you take it in. In terms of hoppy bitterness and IBU count, I think you'd be lucky to get about 30 IBUs out of this beer, to be honest. Um, 30's maybe even being generous. It might only be about 25 or something like that. Not really going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness, this one at all. Um, but the the graininess, uh, the malt base has a good balance between that smoothness that you'd expect. There's a little bit of sweetness in there, but it does dry out the further you go into into the aftertaste. And you've got a nice little bit of juicy fruity character as well. Overall, to me, this is um, it's a difficult one to place this on the spectrum of styles. Um, it's got a bit. Of, it leans more towards the German side of things for me. It definitely leans a little bit more towards that, but it does have the kind of fruitiness that you'd expect of um, the American radios and things like that. But of course, you do get smoked doppel box and stuff like that. So if I was kind of comparing this to other beers that I've tried before, I would say that this is one that has. It's got the drinkability of like a German Dunkel to it. Um, but it's got the, some of the flavours that you'd expect of like Spezial, Rauch beer, something like that. It's got it's got the drinkability it's got the drinkability of a lager beer, um, but it does have some of the more fruity aspects of the American radio. So I can kind of see where they were going with this one. I think it's worked out pretty damn well, I have to say, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this beer again. I need to try like a stout and an IPA from these guys because this is one that I picked really um, just because it's two styles that I enjoy whereas if you want to get a good measure of brewery you need like an IPA pardon me or uh, something like that or you, you want a stout at the other end of the spectrum too but to be honest this beer gets a big thumbs up from me wouldn't hesitate to drink it again so let's leave it at that just now because I'm starting to ramble so yeah this one was the Westo smoked red ale from Westo beer in Westo Koboji in the kind of northwestern part of uh, the state of Iowa in the Midwest in America. I'm saying West a hell of a lot in this review. But yeah, um, a nice beer this one and I'm glad that I was able to try it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. So until the next time, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Westo Beer as well. Do give me some other Iowa brewery recommendations that you'd like me to have a look at. I did... Um, review I, I did go to Okoboji Brewing Company and film an on-site review but they didn't have any bottles or anything like that to take away at the time unfortunately so maybe I'll go back at some point because Okoboji was uh, was quite nice so we'll see how that goes um, it's in the future of course I will be back in America fairly soon but thank you again for watching let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from Westo and give me some other recommendations as well so until the next time Slanja just now and I'll catch you guys very soon Slanja, Skull, cheers